Hi, my name's Todd, um, also known as Taken by the Grays. That's the name of my blog where I share my close encounters and abductions with extraterrestrials. Um, I want to talk to you briefly about my Men in Black abduction that I had. It was 1981, Sandy Lake, Manitoba, Canada. And I was uh, out there mid-August. It was a very hot day, very hot night, 11 o'clock at night. Mid Midweek, mid there was nobody around, not really a lot of people. I decided to go for a walk instead of trying to sleep. And I uh, was walking for about five minutes. And all of a sudden, this black car pulled up right beside me out of nowhere. I didn't hear it coming. I didn't, nothing, it just made me jump. Anyway, um, it was uh, 60, I, after some research in recent years, um, it's guessed by me to be about, be about a 65 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. Um, it was black, tinted windows all around, and the two passenger doors opened up, and out stepped two men in black. They had black suits, black ties, black shoes, black gloves, black sunglasses, black hats, white t-shirts, or not t-shirts, sorry, that's me. Um, they had white, white collared shirts, and that was able for me to distinguish why they look so different and their skin was blue. So it was something that threw me right off. Anyway, they were on me in an instant. I didn't even have a chance to react. They were both at my side and they started taking me towards the car the back door wide open and I knew that's where they were destined for with me and so I started fighting back, pushing back with my feet and it still didn't slow them down. It was a constant speed that they took me. Anyway, I just got to see if there's a bear here. <clears throat> um, anyway, uh, they took me to the car, got me to the car, I put my feet up against the car frame and I'm pushing back and they got me inside the car. I'm sitting in the back seat, one mib on my left, one on my right. There was a driver, he turned, looked at the mib on my right. It looked like they were having a conversation, but no words were being said. And then he gave him a nod and he turned forward and the vehicle started to move forward. The mib on my right pulled out this big syringe. Um, it was vile, it was about that thick was about that long and then the needle on top of it anyway it was a dark clear golden liquid and I was uh, <laughs> I was sure it was for me so I started to fight and they had me the guy on my left had me the guy on my right had me he took the syringe put it right here in my chest injected it and it was very quickly that I lost consciousness I came to I don't know how long later it was dark out, that's all I know. <laughs> and uh, I thought it was still in the car because I could see the road. But just becoming conscious, becoming aware, um, almost like a drug state, um, I started to realize I was about 200 feet, 250 feet above the road. And I was looking down on it. It was a curving road, a little bit winding, and it was along a shoreline. Deep cliff, big rocks at the bottom, big white water. I had never been to the ocean, and I was pretty sure that's what it was. Anyway, I knew it was a far, a far away from home as I possibly could ever, ever imagine, and uh, I started to quickly lose consciousness again, and uh, I came to the next morning in my tent. I didn't get there myself, I know that. I was in a pretty um, dazed, um, almost uh, slow state for the next day and a half. I really, it was slow for me. Anyway, um, sorry, there's just some wild animals here. And they're looking at me and I'm looking at them. Anyway. Um, I did some research um, probably about four or five years ago, four years ago, 
on Men in Black encounters, abductions, to see if there's anybody that had anything that was even similar to what I had experienced. And um, lo and behold, after all these things that I found that weren't even close, I found one that was very similar. And of all places, it happened in my hometown of Brandon, Manitoba, and it happened in 1951, 30 years before mine happened, about, say, 60 miles to the north of Brandon. But Brandon was my hometown pretty much all my life. And I thought, what are the odds of that? Anyway, there was a disc craft that was involved with his encounter abduction. And uh, I do know from experience that the disc craft, along with elongated diamonds and various other crafts belong to the greys. Anyway, that's all I really want to tell you um, for now. I have a lot to go, but that will lead to another video another time. And uh, please do check out my blog because I'm going to be starting to uh, share about New World Order. And I have a very close friend that I've had for years that was part of New World Order and she's going to be sharing and connecting the greys with it as well. So you're in for a shock. It's going to be a lot of stuff that you probably never would have imagined, but it's all true, unfortunately, and we got to face the truth sometime as hard as, hard as it may be to swallow. Um, stay cool. Peace.